What is going on YouTube? This is The Last Musketeer, and welcome to the finale of Fire Emblem Heroes. So first and foremost, I need to talk about some things while I have some gameplay and some chapter clears in the background. Uh, the first thing is, this video is ending a week early. I normally do the series to a part 5 where I do the finale, uh, but this one's going on part 4 because mainly I'm having a hard time keeping focus in this game. It's not that it's overall a bad game, and I'll explain more reasoning later on. It's just very monotonous with the combat. Most of the stuff that you do is generally the same. Uh, there is some variation, there is a little bit of differences in some spots, but most of it is very much the same. And for me, uh, personally, it got a little boring as I'm going through. So, let me just say that that is my opinion. Do not focus solely on that. If you enjoy this style, especially if you're a fan of the old Fire Emblem games, uh, you're probably going to have a better shot of keeping uh, your interest in it, because I don't think overall that it's a bad game. It's just the way it's packaged compared to the original is a little strange, and obviously being a phone game, it does make sense. Nintendo did dip their toes in the water on this one and, and try to uh, get something that people could really enjoy while also getting into that gotcha community that has a lot of value to it and from a company standpoint that is a smart thing to do but also kind of sad to see uh, with the way the thing goes because there's a couple of quality of life things in this game that actually irk me a little bit so the feh pass kind of like a battle pass if you will is honestly hiding a couple of quality of life changes behind it so you'll have a way to uh, normally not be able to back up in a map so you'll you'll make a turn it finalizes that turn doesn't let you make changes now if you have the battle pass evidently it will allow you to uh, revert that go so you can actually uh, get rid of a decision a wrong decision that you actually made prior to that which is a good idea that should have been in the initial base game and wasn't quite in the game itself for a free-to-play. Now, obviously that's not that big of a deal. Um, the other one being auto-farming a stage without having to click each time the match is over, which is actually just saving you a lot of clicks and allows you to AFK a little more. You can you can turn it on, walk away, let it use all your energy, uh, which would be a great thing. But that one's also locked behind the FAH pass, which, once again, it, it's a smart thing by Nintendo, or by the company, whoever is the main uh, head behind this, but it just it just doesn't feel right. This is something that should be in the base game. Your, your FEH pass should be more for resources, uh, maybe skins, for characters, a uh, little bit of extra level up materials, or, you know, even a featured character that you can only get through the battle pass. That is something that is perfectly fine, because if people want to spend on that, then by all means, go for it. But not having quality of life in the regular gameplay is actually, uh, to me, it just leaves a bitter taste in my mouth and I, I can't get behind it. So enough with the actual rant, let's talk about the gameplay because that's the most important aspect uh, when it comes to any of these. So what you're going to see here is the Ether Raids and this is one of your more in-game type modes, though obviously I didn't get that far because it is a short duration for the series in general. So. Um, Take it with a grain of salt what you see here. Uh, I think for the most part, they do a really good job of this and they have some cool mechanics where you're setting up different towers and you're gonna have to play around the enemy's defenses as well as their units. So as you're getting further in, uh, there's probably a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to it. Uh, it's gonna make it a little harder for you to actually uh, be able to do well in it. So you're gonna have to really put forth a lot of effort and focus mainly on specific teams because I think while they do give a good amount of resources compared to what they used to from what I've heard in the comments, uh, you, you still have to be careful with how you place things and what resources you use on what because that can make a big difference in just how fast you progress. Now, that does obviously go hand in hand with most gotchas, uh, but I think this one even more so because the stat improvements that you get are going to be very, very beneficial. They may not seem like it at times, it may feel like it doesn't make that much of an improvement, but every little bit counts, especially in a game like this. As you can see here on this one, I almost lost this one. But uh, with proper placement and baiting the actual archer to come down, I could finish it off without worrying it. Uh, sometimes I do use my brain for these, other times I just uh, 
put wherever. But I will say, when it comes to the PvP aspect, uh, every every bit of stat counts. I'm not sure just how hard it gets with the regular events on the highest difficulties, because some of them I could not unlock. Uh, I think I need a lot more time, a lot more resources to put into characters to actually get them to a point where they could actually farm the super duper high level uh, difficulties. But campaign does go to lunatic, so it starts at your normal difficulty, it goes to like a hard difficulty, and then it goes to lunatic, which seems to be the last one. Uh, maybe if you beat all of lunatic, it'll unlock another one. I could be wrong on that, I don't know. Uh, didn't show a locked option or anything, so I tried lunatic, ran a few stages, I think I show one or two actual maps in this, and I'll talk about it when it gets to that point, but they were actually extremely easy. Um, I was not expecting it to be that easy because... You know, maybe it's based on the actual chapters that I did, or the books that I did, because they came out at an earlier time. Maybe the heroes that you go against aren't as meta as they used to be, and maybe are a little art easier to deal with with the lineup that I had. Either way, I'm not sure on that. But I think that does speak at least to uh, what the game offers in terms of actual resources that it gives and heroes that it gives, because I think they do a pretty good job of allowing you uh, to access most of the content with what you're giving. There, there's actually a lot of summons I did, and I saved some extra uh, for this video just so I can talk about all the different things that I saw during it, but the main point is when you're going through a free-to-play experience, you have to feel like you're going to be able to actually do things without being locked behind some paywall, and I think they do a good job of that. I think that's one thing uh, that I did really like about it, is all the different options. Now, of course, when it comes to a Nintendo game, especially in the Fire Emblem series, they always have really cool art, and, and I talked about it before in the other videos, uh, the beauty and simplicity of the artwork in this game is actually fantastic, and while that might not be the most exciting sounding thing, uh, it gives it more of a, a natural feel, I think. So it makes it feel a little more realistic than it would normally. You know, everyone's all for uh, the fancy uh, super graphics. Everything looks clean, everything looks fresh, which I get. Uh, it's always a great aspect to a game. Uh, but something as simple as this being uh, this good to look at and this pleasing to the eye is actually something that I was really excited about. Now the story, does feel a little lackluster at times. I don't think there's a whole lot fleshed out, and I'm sure some of the events that they put out also have a little bit of story because I've I've looked into some of it. Um, obviously, I didn't get to take part in a lot of them, uh, but I got I got a good idea of what's going on. There's a little bit of character building, though not that much, especially when you're going into some of the uh, special stages that you can earn some extra rewards on. Uh, perhaps something that, to do with a specific character uh, when it's released going into the summons section. But as you can see with here, I'm doing one of those stages and Hector just says, if I just sit on a throne all the time, I'm going to get rusty. Let's get to it. That's basically, you know, how you're going to see a lot of these set up. Now, uh, the campaign obviously has a little more to it. You're going to be able to read through it a little more, but a lot of this is just characters talking, uh, saying some type of exclamation, uh, you know, and you get into the fight. That's how most of the events uh, seem to be. And I will say, though, the events are actually uh, pretty difficult, because as you're getting up to some of the higher difficulties, you're actually going to need a pretty well thought out team, uh, and really, honestly, some good counters for that, especially waves where they're, they're summoning uh, extra to come and fight through, because as you see there, I lost one, and when one goes down, in these difficulties, you lose. You lose automatically. So if you place anything in a weird spot, and I, you know, what I'm doing now isn't the greatest moves. I know that. I, I'm just kind of uh, throwing them out there for a way to show people uh, what it looks like. But through proper placement and with good counters, you're going to do a lot better uh, than I did here. But honestly, that, that's just the whole thing. That The gameplay itself doesn't change from anything you've been seeing in these vids. Uh, no matter what event it is, whatever it may be, you're going to see the same thing. It's all about strategy, which is good. But when the strategy is basically the same, it takes a lot of feeling out of the actual game. Now, one good thing is, though, you can click on the heroes or the enemies that you're going against and see their actual attack range, where they can move to and what they can actually attack uh, from. So, 
you've got a good idea of where you're moving things. And as you see here, some more summon in from the bottom because that's generally how these go. If you can wipe the, the whole team, I don't know if it actually ends the round. I, I always forget uh, on that aspect, but there's some of them that you have to survive a certain amount of rounds, which makes it a lot harder, which in that case, you can build ones that are A, either extremely tanky and do a lot of damage, or you can bring in some healers. You can do some ones that give uh, the skill like dance, where it gives you an extra turn uh, if you use it on a specific hero that you've already used in that round. So there's there's plenty of options uh, for countering these, and the game does give you a lot. Obviously, I have a lot uh, from the little time uh, that I've been able to play it. So, you know, I, I if I've got a good roster like that, anyone can have a good roster like that. Uh, but we're going into these summonings now, because this is something that I really need to talk about, and uh, there was a specific one that I wanted to pull on. So I did all the summons, right? I get to 40 of 40, where it's supposed to give you a free hero, but it turns out it's actually blocked locked behind the FEH pass as well. So that's another thing that's actually a benefit uh, to the FEH patch, which I think is weird because a lot of times there will be a pity system in games, which that one essentially is uh, because you get to choose what hero you want out of it. So having a pity system locked behind a paywall is a bit of a downside, honestly. That's something that I don't often see, even with some of the stingiest games. Uh, you, you generally don't have that option. Now, I did pull, I think, three different five stars when I was doing uh, the 40 pulls altogether. So, you know, the rates aren't that bad. You, you've got some pretty good options there. But just knowing that I did all 40 pulls and I, I can't even use the actually, like, pity system there is, is kind of sad to see. So definitely a big downside. I, I think there's a lot of things that could change in this game to make it a lot better that they just don't. And it's a bit confusing, to say the least. But, you know, it's their system, it's how they want to do it. You know, if, if people are down with it, that's fine. It's perfectly up to you. Like I said, uh, these are all just my opinions, and so whatever you want to do is ultimately up to you. But I'm doing some of the lunatic uh, versions, and this one is on the last chapter of, I think, maybe book one. Uh, just to show you what the hardest difficulty for campaign looks like. So, I'm just running through these guys. Like, no problem whatsoever, which is surprising to say the least I figured that when I go into the hardest versions uh, that I'm really gonna have a bit of a difficulty actually going through it now that could be because I was playing on book one I didn't really think about that aspect in itself because I think they do uh, the books by release of the actual heroes so some of the ones from the first one may be a lot uh, further behind in meta compared to what I'm actually using to clear them, which could make a big difference. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt, <laughs> but I will say I think it was a lot easier than it actually should have been. I should have had to uh, strategize a little bit more going into that, but uh, as you can see here, I'm doing some arena, uh, and for the most part I hadn't been losing arena, though this one, uh, they did have a character that was extremely strong, uh, <laughs> wiped one of my heroes right away, Hilda, uh, that I use a lot. Uh, also, Wives Blylith, which is kind of sad to see, uh, but now I've got Ninian and Frey left, and I'm going to have to hope uh, that I can clear this out, but I know it's going to be a tough task regardless, so we're going to try to do it, and luckily, actually attacks Ninian instead of Freya, because if it hadn't, then I would have lost Freya, and I would have lost the match, which is actually uh, good, because the AI probably targets the weakest, or at least the ones they have the element of advantage over, uh, so that's something that you can use uh, to utilize and counter the system a little bit. Now, if it was like a real-time, which I think there is a real-time PvP, though I did not try it, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot more difficult. People are going to be paying attention to actually what is going on, uh, but... Like I said, most of these arena battles, really not hard. So, unless you're getting further along, which I am at a low tier, still, like tier 5, uh, that's not that much, because I didn't spend all that much time in, in PvP. I wanted to get as much of the content, the regular content, out as I could. Uh, but there are good rewards from each of these things. Uh, like I said, this game is generous in that sense. So, as we're getting to this point, I, I should actually talk about <laughs> what I think in terms of whether the game is worth it, or not, because that is the basis of these whole series, just to make sure that people know uh, what they're getting into with the game. So, when it comes to the art, I'll give it, you know, like a 7 out of 10. I, I, I'd say that's good rating, because I really do like the simplistic art style of this. It's actually nice, it fits well with the system, and it fits well with the old style of Fire Emblem. So, I am very happy about that. I do like that they put a lot of effort in it. And there's like 911 heroes. Uh, granted, some of them are different variations of the hero, of course, but still, 
quite a lot that they've had to flesh out and figure out and also work the skill systems around. Uh, so it's really cool to see that many. So anyone who is a big collector, have fun with that. You're going to have a hard time getting a lot of these heroes probably. Uh, but but when it comes to the actual generosity of the game, I think it's actually pretty decent. I'd give it probably like a 6 out of 10 as far as generosity because while they do give you a decent amount, it does also take a good amount to make your uh, full first team at least uh, be strong enough to take out a lot of the content. Now if you're choosing wisely, uh, really not that bad of a deal, uh, but overall it does take a bit of a grind to figure that out and you are going to have to be, as a free to play player, a little more careful uh, with the choices that you make. Uh, when it comes to the skill system, I think most of the 5 stars that are pulled are actually at their highest version of the skill. Uh, you can add some passive traits to them, like some seals, uh, they're going to help with the overall stats as well, which is really good. So they're, they're adding uh, multiple different ways to actually buff your character, as you'll see there. Some of the skills with the one with giving HP plus 5, uh, which is nice. So. <laughs> Honestly, you do have a lot of customization options, and you can actually change some things out. Then you can have other heroes uh, transfer their skills to other heroes. So, like, you can change things around. You have a lot of options. I think they do a good job of fleshing all of that out. And so, when it comes to the actual gameplay sense, I have to give it a 5 out of 10 on that. Because, honestly, it, it's good in the sense of the old Fire Emblem. It is a little lacking a little bit in that department but at the same time it's a decent game it's not something that I'm going to go out of my way to play obviously I'm I, I'm a little bored with it uh, so which is why I was ending it a little early and plus it's so monotonous I think watching it other than if you're watching maybe somebody that's like a high-level player uh, do stuff to uh, help you with guides or anything like that I think that's a good option but I, I feel like just watching it itself it's just so monotonous that it, it just doesn't have any appeal but as some of these things flash by I, I think I'm done talking about that in the general sense. I think, like I say with anything, it, even if what I say it seems somewhat negative about the game, I still think that there are a lot of positives to it. And hopefully I explained enough in this video of what I feel and in the previous videos because I don't want to harp on the same thing over and over again. But I'm going to end the video here, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.